Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Morgan for those of you who are new and today we are here to talk about postpartum prep and postpartum essentials. Alright you guys, as I sit here today, I am 39 weeks and 5 days. I am feeling all of the signs of labor. In fact, I was up all night last night with pretty excruciating back labor. So I know that it is just right around the corner and I needed to get this video recorded for you guys and for myself to see how I prepped this time around. I feel a little nauseous. I can definitely tell that labor is on its way. So bear with me, you guys. This is my list of postpartum prep. This is what I did with my daughter, and this is what I'm doing with my son this time around. Well, that's weird to say my son, that's weird. So the first thing that I did is I prepped padsicles, and I'm gonna insert a little clip here for you guys of how I made these padsicles. You just need um, a tablespoon or two of witch hazel on one of those big overnight, um, overnight pads, the purple pads. Um, just a couple tablespoons of the witch hazel. I went a little crazy with it. Um, I think I probably did closer to like five tablespoons, but just a couple will be just fine. Um, just enough to wet that middle section and then a little bit of aloe. Now, yes, you can use the aloe with the lidocaine. Lidocaine is a pain relief. Um, it's like a topical anesthetic. I don't know how to say that, but it is a topical pain reliever and that is actually the same thing as the Dermaplast. So if you're using um, an aloe with lidocaine, that's just fine. Um, if not, that's okay as well. And then I do um, a couple drops of lavender. Now, I don't really know why, I honestly don't know why the lavender is in there. I'm just following a recipe that I used the first time around, um, something I found on Pinterest more than likely. But um, after you're done adding all those ingredients to the pad, you fold it back up, you put it in a baggie, and you put them in the freezer so that afterwards, um, if you are hurting quite a bit down there and you're swelling, um, you can use at least like one or two of these a day. Now, my nurses told me not to ice down there too, too much because you want the blood to be flowing. Um, it is nice to have a little bit of an ice pack, if you will, for down there. So I'll go ahead and I'll roll that footage right now. Okay, so this is the finished product. Um, this one I just pulled directly out of the freezer. These have been in the freezer for, I wanna say probably um, two, three weeks now. So um, these are nice and solidly frozen. Padsicles are the first thing on my list. The second thing on my list is flushable wipes. Now, I don't have those on me right now. Um, they're actually upstairs in the bathroom. I just use the um, up and up version, but once you are finally able to wipe down there, which um, for you first time mamas, you probably won't be able to wipe down there for the first two to four weeks. Um, they give you what's called a peri bottle, which is the next thing on my list um, for postpartum prep, but the hospital does give that to you as well. Getting sidetracked. Um, but flushable wipes, I really like to have those on hand um, just to kind of clean up down there, if you will. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to the next item, um, like I mentioned, a peri bottle. Now this is from my first time around um, with my daughter, and that was quite a while ago, but I think they still give you these in the hospital to wash down there. You can also use this for while you are going to the bathroom to alleviate any kind of discomfort. Um, I really enjoyed using this, and it makes you feel a lot cleaner down there um, when it's kind of a, looking like a war zone. The next thing on my postpartum prep list is um, nursing bras and pumping bras. Now, 
for those of you who aren't nursing, which again, fed is best. I'm not for one way or the other. I just personally choose to breastfeed. Um, I, since I'm breastfeeding and pumping, this is my pumping bra. I've got one pumping bra on hand. Um, I'll probably end up needing more. <laughs> Uh, and then I just have a bunch of nursing bras. Now I have most of my nursing bras packed in my um, in my hospital bag. Sorry, brain fart. Um, but this is another one of my nursing bras. This is actually a Fabletics bra, um, but I thought it would be really nice for nursing because it zips in the middle um, and it unhooks. It's super easy just to you know whip them out. <laughs> so. Nursing bras is on my postpartum prep list, again, because I'm choosing to um, breastfeed my baby. Now another item that I do not have on me at the moment um, is the mother's milk tea. Now I didn't use this with my daughter the first time around, but I've been much more into teas this time around in general, so I will make sure that I have the mother's milk tea on hand. All right, on to the next one, <laughs> the holy grail. For me anyways, I know some people don't like these, but um, the mesh undies. The really cute, the really sexy mesh undies that the hospital sends you home in. I am a curvy girl and I feel like these are just super comfortable. I can see why they maybe wouldn't be more comfortable if you were petite um, and you wanted something that was more <laughs> form-fitting. But trust me, um, you don't want form-fitting panties, um, especially if you're a curvier girl like I am. <laughs> Just, no. The mesh panties are wonderful for, <laughs> for postpartum. Um, and then I do stock up on some granny panties as well, which I'm sure everybody thinks is super cute, but it is very essential. It's not like you can be running around wearing super cute um, lacy underwear from Victoria's Secret. Um, I just, I don't want to ruin anything. After my first four weeks last time, um, I did stop bleeding around three weeks. Um, so like after four weeks I went in and I did buy myself a bunch of really cute underwear, but that was kind of like a treat to myself for going through what I went through. And I might do the same thing this time around, but until that happens, I have to wear the really super cute granny panties. I did just want to quickly mention that everything on this list um, I typically will prep or make sure that I have on hand before I go into labor and um, I usually do this right around 36, 37 weeks I start stocking up on all of these items. Right. I never had to use this last time um, because I fortunately did not suffer from hemorrhoids. <laughs> I never suffered from them in my pregnancy and I did not suffer any um, hemorrhoids from any hemorrhoids um, after giving birth to my daughter. But if you do, there are two things that go hand in hand that I think should be on your postpartum prep list. And that is um, preparation H and stool softener. I know it's not real cute ladies, but um, it's kind of a hot mess down there. And um, I think stool softener actually, regardless if you have hemorrhoids or not, you just, that first um, bowel movement <laughs> after you have a baby can be traumatic no matter if you tore or if you didn't tear. Regardless, it's still scary. Those are two things I would recommend to make sure that are on your list. If you suffer from hemorrhoids during your pregnancy, you'll more than likely suffer from them after birth. So those are the two things that I recommend for you guys to put on your postpartum prep list. Um, but again, like stool softener, I would say maybe just have that on hand in general, um, hemorrhoids or not. Witch Hazel. Now, I know I kind of already mentioned this for the padsicles. I always have a little bit left over after doing my padsicles, and once in a while it's nice just to put inside of my peri bottle instead of water. I'll get give everything a good like spray down with the Witch Hazel. Um, I don't exactly know how it helps, but it feels so much better down there after I use the Witch Hazel and after I use... Um, go, this is going to be going into my next thing, um, but after I use the Witch Hazel pads. On to the next thing, tux pads. Tux pads are witch hazel pads. Witch hazel is tux pads. That is the main ingredient inside of tux pads. Now, you're gonna be making yourself a nice little diaper Sunday every single time you go to the bathroom. The nurses usually at the hospital are really good about showing you how to make your panty Sunday. Um, <laughs> oh, this is like so TMI, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, family, I'm sorry, friends, if you're watching this, but. This is all the reality of bringing children into the world. Um, anyway, so tux pads, 
definitely on your postpartum prep list. The hospital is likely going to send you home with some or like their version of them. Um, they're great, use them all, they're wonderful. The Dermaplast Spray. Now I know I already mentioned the Dermaplast Spray, but it is most definitely on my postpartum prep list. This is like magic medicinal spray. I used the crap out of this my first time around. Um, and in fact, I ran out of it rather quickly. The hospital sent me home with a, um, like a little can of it. And I ran out of it quickly and my husband had to go get me some because it is a lifesaver. Now you need the hospital strength one, which has a blue cap. Um, so just make sure if you are gonna go out and buy this beforehand, that it is the hospital strength. All right, next thing, if you are breastfeeding, now I don't know if this happens if you're not breastfeeding, I'm sure it does a little bit, but nursing pads for leakage. Um, I don't know why I didn't bring any down here, but uh, nursing pads are essential because especially if you're breastfeeding, you are your milk is going to come in a few days after you have baby. I usually just bring a couple nurse or a couple of breast pads with me to the hospital. I do not think that I needed them last time, but just in case I had some with me. Um, but I do have an entire basket full ready to go for at home because once your milk comes in, you're going to be leaking. You're going to need something to catch them. Now you can do reusable or disposable. I was never crazy about the reusable ones. Um, I might dab into like a couple of different brands this time to see if I can find something that really truly does work. Uh, but for now, I have really enjoyed the disposable ones. I know it's not very earth friendly, they're not recyclable, but that's just what works best for me and is definitely one of my must haves on my postpartum prep list. Well, this is a new one for me, um, but this is the earth, oh, I wonder if I get, this is gonna be really washed out. But this is the Earth Mama uh, Perennial Spray. Now I just got mine off of Amazon. I apologize for my overdue manicure. Um, but this Earth Mama Perennial Spray, um, the take care down there, I know that I have mentioned this in another one of my videos, um, but I actually got the recommendation for this from another YouTuber, Life Forever Changed, if you wanna go and check her out. I love her videos, but I definitely want to try this out for myself. Now going hand in hand with the herbal perennial spray, I also got the organic perennial balm. And there is that close up of that guy. Now if you open it, um, that is what the cream looks like. It's kind of like a, I don't know, it smells minty to me. You can kind of see where I've like dabbed my finger in it, but um, ooh, it smells so good. It has like a, I don't know, maybe eucalyptus it's supposed to have a cooling effect um for down there so i did add this to my list of postpartum essentials for this time around the next thing on my postpartum prep slash postpartum essentials um list is the mother love nipple cream now i do like the earth mama nipple butter as well um but this one, I again, I've, I've mentioned this in another one of my videos, but this one just had really good reviews on Amazon and I wanted to try this one first. It comes in a little container. Again, um, I just got this one off of Amazon. I have used this already a couple times in my pregnancy due to sensitive um, nipples. So I can already tell you that I really like this stuff. We'll see how I like it during nursing, but um, that's another new one on my postpartum prep list for this time around. Um, the Suvi gel pads is the next on my list. Um, I do have this again in a couple other videos, but it's nice to have like everything all in one, um, all in one video for you guys for postpartum. These are the Soothe Gel Pads. Um, now I only have one pack of them. I usually reuse them a couple times, um, and sometimes I'll even throw them in my fridge so that they're cooled. But um, these are really nice for when you are just um, first adapting to breastfeeding your baby. All right, so that moves me into um, the three-in-one breast therapy by Lansnow. Um, these are like little um, heat slash ice packs for your breasts. Um, it says it relieves engorgement, relieves mastitis, plugged ducts, um, and it actually says use hot to reduce time spent pumping. Huh, I didn't know that. These are an absolute must-have um, for if you are breastfeeding, and which is why it is on my postpartum prep 
list. So pads. Pads are the next thing on my postpartum prep list. I have two kinds of pads. Now, the first kind of pad, it's um, the same kind of pad you can use to make your padsicles, but these are the overnight ones. I honestly, I didn't experience a ton of bleeding after I had my daughter. I had a little bit, but I only used a few of these, maybe for the first week I used them at night, um, which is why I have a ton of them left over. And I'm really not a pads user um, when I'm not recovering postpartum. <laughs> So, but I do have some of these left on hand. You will need a couple of them and your hospital is gonna send you home with a buttload of them as well. But you will definitely um, need to use at least a couple of them. Now these are the pads that I use for um, the majority of the time while I'm recovering postpartum. And that is the Always Pads. I think these are just the regular um, absorption. I don't know. <laughs> but they are the Always brand and I really enjoy these. They're comfortable, um, they're flexible. I don't feel like you can hear that I'm wearing a pad um, versus with these bigger ones and even like the giant diaper sized ones that the hospital sends you home in. Definitely can tell that you're wearing a pad because it's all swishy and crunchy and super cute. But So those are the two pads that I like to have on hand for postpartum and I just have like a basket that I keep right next to my toilet with kind of all of the things that you're gonna need to use in the bathroom. Um, a basket similar to this. So this is what I've kind of been like pulling my stuff out of for you guys, but just a similar basket to this. Keep all your pads, your tux pads, um, maybe your spray, your der dermaplast spray and your um, peri bottle. Those are all great things to keep in that basket next to the, your main toilet um, so that every single time you go, you have um, kind of a nice little setup for yourself. Okay, so one thing that I've been going back and forth on this time is it's doctors versus midwives. I, I know that doctors do not recommend Epsom salt baths. In fact, they tell you on your checkout or on your release forms from the hospital not to do Epsom salt baths, but some midwives that I've talked to um, do recommend them. So I'm kind of going back and forth on whether or not to include this on my postpartum prep list this time um, you guys let me know in the comments below have you taken an Epsom salt bath after you've had a baby does it work let me know All right, so I'm gonna get into the last couple things I have in my postpartum prep list now around the house especially right now <laughs> my poor daughter has what I'm pretty sure is RSV right now and I'm about to have a baby boy so Yes, I'm freaking out a little bit. Um, it's January, it's RSV season, it's cold season, flu season. It is not the best time in the whole world to have a baby, um, but hand sanitizer. I have these bad boys all over the house. I will make my guests wash their hands and then use hand, hand sanitizer as well just because it is a terrible time of year and you definitely don't want your baby um, getting sick. I know I'm kind of a little bit of a germ freak, but I have to be this time of year. The last thing in this basket anyways that I wanted to go over, during your hospital stay, um, and I already talked about this in my hospital bag video, but I recommend that you get shapewear, like a tank top, something that can kind of hold you in, suck you in a little bit, make you feel like your tummy isn't all alien and jelly-like. You're not likely going to fit into a postpartum girdle at that point, maybe a belly bandit, but for me anyways, I just wanted something that was gonna hold me together, but I wasn't going to feel too constricted, especially after having a baby, the first couple days you just wanna be comfy. Um, but getting into like your first and second week postpartum, I personally, um, really wanted to take advantage of the fact that my body was still producing um, the hormone that um, loosens your joints and your muscles. Um, and I used a Bellafit girdle. Now this is my Bellafit girdle and um, it comes with two different sizes on here. Um, and you start out with the looser size and as your hips, because it pulls your hips back together, like I said, because your body is still producing this hormone. I forget what it's called, I'll put it here for you. Um, 
your body's producing this hormone to um, loosen your hips and get ready for birth and you're still kind of producing it afterwards so take advantage of it pull yourself back together um, with one of these girdles pull your belly back in now I very obviously have diastasis recti this time around I can tell when I sit forward because my um, abs do this really weird thing <laughs> um, so I'm definitely going to be using this to help um, try and treat that but you start with the looser setting and then you work your way into the tighter setting um, you can just order your um, pre-pregnancy size in this now I might need to size down um, because this is from when I had my daughter and um, I was a little bit bigger when I had my daughter so I might need to size down even more so after I get to this second line of hooks but um, a girdle or just some kind of postpartum wrap to help bring your hips, your body, your belly back in again um, and just to help and to help you get back to where you were um, pre-pregnancy. Now, I'm not saying 100% pre-pregnancy, get back to where you were at. Um, if you do, that's wonderful. Um, I just feel like this helps to at least to get you there a part of the way. Okay, the rest of the things on my list, I don't have like examples to show you, but they are definitely on my postpartum prep list. Now, the um, first thing here is online grocery order. I honestly, I just use the online Walmart grocery order um, just because it's close to where I live. Um, but I also like to use a couple of local grocery stores or Instacart. Everything that I know that I'm going to need for the next week or two for groceries, I make a meal list and I will add in all of the ingredients that I need for that meal list. So me knowing that I wanna eat a little bit healthier, but I need to have a nice and full healthy diet um, because I will be breastfeeding. I added everything that I wanted in there. I got, I got all the avocados, I got the rice cakes, I got the almond butter, I've got all my goodies in there because I snack a lot when I'm breastfeeding, you guys. So I added everything to my cart in Walmart all ready to go so all I have to do is click place order when we are ready to have baby so that the grocery order is ready to be picked up or delivered the day we get home I cannot say how helpful this is um, for after having a baby if you have really yummy nutritional snacks on hand um, and already ordered it's gonna be so much easier to stick to like your postpartum quote-unquote diet um, another item that I do not have on me is the after ease tincture now I added this to my list very last minute this time I actually added it this morning because I just remembered that I wanted to get it off of Amazon um, this after ease tincture helps with the cramping and the contracting that happens after you have a baby and I heard that um, it gets it gets worse and worse with each baby. I don't remember it being very I don't remember it being too terrible with my first so I am a little bit more mentally prepared this time around that the contractions especially when you're breastfeeding um, those contractions to pull your uterus back into its normal size um, I'm prepared for that to be pretty painful. So this after ease tincture is supposed to help ease that. Now I do want to feel that pain a little bit um, just to know that things are working, things are happening the way that they should be, but um, if it becomes too painful, I do want to have something on hand to help relieve it. The next thing I kind of added last minute to my postpartum prep list is postpartum wear. So clothing for yourself after you have baby. You're going to be in this really in-between awkward um, space. I mean, at least it was for me because... I was not blessed with the super greatest of genetics and my body didn't pull itself in all the way so I kind of had this like belly so control top leggings looser shirts things of like that are gonna be easy to breastfeed in these are all wonderful things for you to have on hand for your postpartum wear and the last thing that I have on my postpartum prep list is just to make sure that my laundry is done and that my sheets are changed I feel like those are no-brainers, but I had to add them to my list to remind myself. So maybe one of you watching this video needs to be reminded to change your sheets and to put your laundry away. My laundry's clean, it's just sitting in a basket and waiting to be hung on hangers, so. All right, I know that was again another longer video, but I really wanted to get everything down on a list for you guys. I really find these videos to be helpful for me when I'm putting my postpartum prep list together, um, especially my first time around. The second time around, I've again, I added a few new things to this list. 
and I started to prep right around 36, 37 weeks um, just to make sure that if baby did come anytime after 37 weeks, I was ready to go. All right, that's gonna wrap up my postpartum essentials slash postpartum prep video. If you guys have any postpartum prep essentials that you personally love, let me know in the comments below. Maybe it would help out other mamas out there as well. Make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel before you leave. I have that birth vlog coming out very soon. I just can't believe that he's almost here. I've got all these newborn videos that I can't wait to share with you guys. I've got all these ideas in my head right now. And again, when I am in labor, I do have an I'm in labor video pre-recorded for you guys so that once I do go into labor, I can make it live. You guys will know right away. Thank you so much again for tuning in to this video. I hope you've really enjoyed my uh, mommy series so far. I have a few more videos planned for this series. So be sure you give the video a big thumbs up if you like the mommy videos and the mommy series on my channel. And I will see you guys sometime in the very near future, which I'm hoping will be Sunday or Monday. Who knows? Next thing you could see is my I'm in labor video. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. What a wonderful world.